Welcome to week five of ModPo. Week five is divided into four sections or chapters. Chapter three is about communist poets of the 1930s, politically radical poets. Chapter four is an introduction to the Harlem Renaissance. Chapter five is a quick take on Robert Frost. And chapter six is about the formalists of the 1950s. Immediately following this video introduction in the ModPo syllabus, you'll find a 25 minute audio introduction and there are headnotes for each of the four sections or chapters. And I would urge you to listen to that 25 minute audio introduction and or read the transcript that we've made of my audio introduction, which goes into much more detail about this important week than I'm gonna do in this brief video. Uh, and again, those headnotes for each of the sections will really, I think, be a help to you in organizing the materials for this week. Week five presents four ways in which poets responded to the high modernism of the teens and 20s, the 19 teens and 1920s. Uh, when I say respond, some of, some of the poets that you'll meet this week respond critically, negatively, doubtfully. Others respond by extending, elaborating, and complicating modernist experiment, the modernist experiments that we met, that we encountered in weeks three and four of the course. The communists, uh, there's only two poems representing the communist poets of the 1930s in the, main syllabus, in the main syllabus, but I would urge you to look at Mod Po Plus. I always urge you to look at Mod Po Plus, but in this case, especially because we've posted in Mod Po Plus a number of poems by communists that are a lot more complicated in their relation to modernism than the two poems that we put in the main syllabus which are more thoroughgoing and obvious in their resistance to certain aspects of modernism. Um, the communist poets overall re were willing to return to narrative in order to tell the story of people struggling during the Depression. Um, they uh, picked up on social representation, which is to say themes, a little less focus on formal innovation. Um, and some of them, as in one of the two poems in the main syllabus, Ruth Lechlitner's poem about an abortionist's office, will return to traditional forms uh, to ironize them, satirize them, or make use of them. So that's chapter four, the first section on the communist poets. The second is a very important chapter uh, on the Harlem Renaissance. Now, the Harlem Renaissance poets were part of modernism, it's not, it's not right to say that they resisted it or criticized it. Ultimately, the Harlem Renaissance poets shared in the excitement of formal innovation, but some were comfortable returning to traditional forms in order to radicalize content, to present themes of racial uh, injustice and to explore anti-blackness and that's the case of the Harlem Renaissance poets that we present in this section. We also uh, present uh, Gwendolyn Brooks, who's not technically part of the Harlem Renaissance, but came afterwards. But there's a, a strong connection between the first Harlem Renaissance poets of the, of the 1920s and Brooks's work a few decades later. I'll have more to say about the Harlem Renaissance in a second. Uh, chapter five on Robert Frost. Well, it's really just one poem, Mending Wall. Uh, Frost was thought of when he first came uh, to prominence as a modernist, but he's not really a modernist. Um, in fact, in some cases, he's an anti-modernist. Mending Wall is a meta poem, we think. It's not just about rebuilding a wall, but it's also about the whole question of subjectivity and objectivity and of identity and um, it's really a fascinating poem, uh, but the one poem by Frost kind of can stand in for what might be called modernist anti-modernism. And finally, in a very quick chapter six, we explore in two poems, the formalists 
or neo-formalists of the 1950s. This was a period of retrenchment and even of anti-modernism. So, chapter three on communists, chapter four, an introduction to the Harlem Renaissance, chapter five, a quick take on Frost, chapter six on formalists of the 50s. Of these four, the Harlem Renaissance, chapter four, is by far the most important, at least to the way that Maud Pope proceeds. The others are more dead end-ish uh, in terms of the Maud Pope flow, but pay close attention to the Harlem Renaissance poets and take a look at Maud Pope Plus, because in Maud Pope Plus, as you can well imagine, we have elaborated and extended the whole story of the Harlem Renaissance and the way that it looks forward to future um, poetic innovation of the contemporary poetry scene as well as much else. So that's week five. It's a lot. We think it's not any more in terms of time taken to read and watch videos. It may be a little more. Don't be put off by the fact that there are four chapters here in this one week. Good luck. Enjoy it. Some of these poems are so stirring and so, uh, so willing to take on the tough issues uh, you, can, you can hardly turn your eyes away from them. They're quite remarkable.